Welcome to SNC's networking tutorial. I'm Chris. And I'm Sean. And this is part two of the Active Directory's Windows Server 2000 tutorial. To create the script itself, open the Start menu, do a search for Notepad program, and open it up. It's a single line command. We use net space u space s colon space backslash backslash your server name backslash the name your shared folder. In our case it's shared. The s argument or s colon argument in this part tells the workstation what letter to use for the drive and the next part tells the workstation where to look for the shared folder. Click on save as found under the file menu to save the file. Uh, navigate in the top part of the save as dialog box to backslash backslash and the name of the primary domain controller in our case ed5769 dash dc backslash sysvol sysvol backslash the domain name in our case network 5769.local backslash scripts backslash the name of your site which in our case is Sean Christina make sure to save the file name as login.bat that's login.bat you can close notepad and then click on the start menu administrative tools group policy management Navigate to uh, your site and right click, click create a GPO in this domain and link it here. We named this particular GPO login script Christina Sean, giving it a meaningful name. And then we right click on the GPO and say edit. Uh, as we navigate through the group policy management editor, we go under user configurations, under policy, and then under window settings and we find scripts log on slash log off and we select log on and right click and click properties click add and then you'll be prompted to click browse to find the login script that you made navigate to the folder where you put it and click on login script and click open after this you will come back to the add a script window uh, you don't need to enter any script parameters so press ok uh, you'll come back to the logon properties you can click ok there as well and then right click on the newly uh, design group policy object and click enforced. This will bring up a dialog box asking if you want to change the enforce setting for this GPO link, click OK. In this section we'll look at how to create home directories. To begin, click on the start menu and then click on computer and double click on C or local disk. Then click on the file menu, select new and then folder from the menu that pops out. Rename that folder to home and then right click on it and select properties from the drop down menu. Once this folder is cr created, go back to the Start menu and under Administrative Tools, select Share and Storage Management. This will bring up the Share and Storage Management window. On the right-hand column, click on Provision Share. To find the location, click on Browse, navigate to the C drive, and click on Home. Click OK, and then Next to proceed to the next screen. Uh, we do not want to change the NTFS settings on this particular one, so click Next. Uh, we do want to create SMB share name home and we want to provide a description as well that's user home directories when we move on to SMB plus next to go into SMB permissions and we want to set it so that administrators have full control and all other users and groups have only read access and write access and then click next we do not want to publish the SMB to a DFS file space so do not click the checkbox there press next to move on review the settings and then click create and it provides confirmation that the share has been configured correctly. Now that the share is created for the home directories to rest in, we will go to the start menu and open up administrative tools and then active directory users and groups. Once in there, we'll find one of our users. We can find them under the students organizational unit. Right click, click on properties and under properties select the profile tab. Uh, we look at home folder and we'll say connect the H drive, we select H from the drop down menu, to, and then we type in the backslash backslash the name of our server, SC server 2008, backslash home dollar sign backslash percent username percent. And this is a variable used by Windows. If you click apply, you'll see the username, or the percent username or percent is replaced by the actual username of the user. When you see that, press OK, and you will know that the home directory has been created with all the proper permissions. In order to link the user's document folder to their home directory, 
you need to go into the Start menu, click on Administrative Tools, and then click on Group Policy Management. Once in there, find your site, right-click on it, click on Create a GPO to the, in the domain, and link it here. Uh, give it another meaningful name. In our case, we named it Document Redirection, Christina Sean, and right-click on your new GPO and click on Edit. Once in the Group Policy Management editor, editor navigate through User Configuration, Windows Settings, Folder Redirection, and expand that part of the tree. Right-click on the Documents folder, click on Properties. The target will have the setting not configured. Change that to say Basic Redirect Everyone's Folder to the same location, and the Target Folder location should say Redirect to the user's home directory. A warning will come up about older operating systems. Click Yes to bypass it. Once that's done, right-click on the new Group Policy object and click Enforced, and that's everything to redirect a user's documents to their home directory. To lock the Start menu using Group Policy, first we have to create a folder in the share that we made for the home's directories. So we right-click in there and say New Folder, and we rename it to say Start Menu. We make sure that the settings have everyone only read and execute and list folder contents access, whereas the administrator has access to everything in the NTFS settings. We then go into the Group Policy Management, and going into Start, Administrative Tools, Group Policy Management. We then navigate to our local site in Group Policy Management console, right-click, say Create a GPO in the domain, and link it here. We give the GPO a meaningful name, Start Menu Lock Christina Sean, and press OK. We then right-click on the newly created GPO and click on Edit in the drop-down menu. This opens the Group Policy Management Editor, where we navigate into User Configuration, Windows Settings, Folder Redirection, and right-click on Start Menu and click on Properties. Under the Target tab, we make the setting Basic, Redirect Everyone's Folder to the same location. Under Target Folder Location, we select Redirect to the following location, and we give the UNC path backslash backslash our server name, backslash home dollar sign, backslash start underscore menu as we name the folder at the beginning of this tutorial. We then go into the settings tab as well and we uncheck grant the user exclusive rights to the start menu otherwise the user would be able to change it at will. Once this is done we can click OK to navigate out. This brings us back to the group policy management editor uh, that we can now close which brings us back to group policy management console. We'll right click on the newly created GPO and click enforced. First step in deploying a printer using Group Policy is to download the printer driver and install the one that you choose. After that's done, open the Start menu, click on Control Panel. In the Control Panel, double click on the printer's icon. Once in there, double click on the icon saying Add Printer. You want to add a local printer, not as one would think, a network printer or something else, but on the server it's a local printer. And we want to create a new port, and from there we select Standard TCP IP port. We select the device type to be a TCP IP device and enter the appropriate address under hostname or IP address. When prompted for the printer driver, select have disk and navigate to where the printer driver unpacked itself. In our case it was in the local disk C under Xerox, the manufacturer of the printer, and then you could find it in the folder P4510, setting for phaser 4510, the model number of it. Once there, we found a .inf file, which we selected, and pressed Open. That brings us back to the Install from Disk menu, and we can press OK to continue. And it brings a number of options for the printer. Our printer was a Xerox Phaser 4510DT PS for PostScript. We left the name the default, and we set it as Default Printer and press Next. The computer then installed the printer, and then we were given an option to share this printer, and we need, decided to give it a meaningful name and a location and a description. We printed a test page just to make sure that it worked and we had the option of troubleshooting if it didn't. In our case the printer pr printed out perfectly. So we could click close on this dialog box. You can see in the bottom right where the page showed that it printed out to the printer. We then go to the start menu, administrative tools and group policy management to deploy the printer to workstations. We right click on our site click on create a GPO on this domain and make a link to it. We call this GPO printer Christina Sean and clicked OK. 
Then, instead of editing the GPO as we've done with many others, we open the Server Manager, which is the icon to the right of the Start menu. We then clicked on Roles in the left-hand column and selected Add Roles from the Roles Summary. From there, we wanted to add the role of Print Services, so we checked it off and pressed Next. Gave us some notes about it, which we read through, and then press Next once again. The only role service that we wanted installed was Print Server, so we left LPD Service and Internet Printing left unchecked and pressed Next. This gave us a summary, which we read through and then pressed Install to install the new role. And once that was finished, we had a confirmation and we could click Close. To deploy the printer to network workstations, we click on the Start menu, Administrative Tools, and Open Print Management. Once in there, we navigate to our server and look for our printer. We look for the Xerox phaser that was installed. We press right click and say Deploy using Group Policy. We're then brought to a dialog box that's looking for the group policy object that we just created, so we click on Browse. We navigate to our site and to the newly created group policy object called Printer Christina Sean. After pressing OK, we check the box that says the users that, that this GPO applies to per user, and then we click the Add button. We can see it shows up, and we press OK. Once we've done this, the group policy is configured correctly. We can test this by logging into a workstation and seeing if the printer is installed, we can then print a test page and we know that the printer is configured correctly if the tape if the page prints out okay.